In this video, we are going to extend our knowledge of parallel lines to include something called an auxiliary line. So first of all, what is an auxiliary line? Auxilar an auxiliary line is any line, ray, or segment, part of a line, that's added to a diagram in order to help complete a problem in geometry. Now my first piece of advice regarding aux auxiliary lines would be to add one only if you need to add one, because adding one to a diagram is going to complicate the diagram. So let's make sure that we add one only in the event that it's necessary to solve the problem. All right, in the very first example, it says we are going to add an auxiliary, use an auxiliary line in order to find the measures of angles E and F. So in this particular case, I'm going to take my highlighter, just like I always do when I'm dealing with parallel lines, and I'm going to highlight the parallel lines. Now sometimes it's helpful to, as I did when I highlighted my parallel lines, you might find it helpful in order to um, extend the parallel lines. And you can do that because lines go on forever and ever and ever and ever. In this particular case, we're also going to add this auxiliary line, which they've indicated in the diagram by using the dotted line. So I'm going to start this question by first considering that red segment my transversal. And I'm going to look at the two parallel lines on the left. So I'm going to look at the green and the yellow. And if I'm looking at the green line and the yellow line, then the angle that measures 41 degrees and angle E are going to be alternate interior angles. They're inside those parallel lines on opposite sides of the transversal. Since the lines are parallel, since one angle measures 41 degrees, the other has to measure 41 degrees as well. So the measure of angle E in that picture is 41 degrees. Secondly, now that I've determined the measure of that angle, now I'm going to go use this blue line as my transversal. And if I'm considering the blue line as my transversal, I'm going to look at the two parallel lines on the right. And in looking at the two parallel lines on the right, I see this angle whose measure is 35 degrees and angle F are also alternate interior angles. And because they're alternate interior angles and the lines are parallel, the measure of angle F must be equal to 35 degrees. Angle W, in looking at the picture, is made up of angles E and F. So the 41 degrees plus the 35 degrees, making the measure of angle W 76 degrees. Now one thing you should know about auxiliary lines is that there are lots of possible ways to put these into a diagram. You may choose to draw a different auxiliary line than I draw, and as long as you come up with the same answer, what you did is very likely correct. So don't get into your head that different has to mean wrong. If you're coming up with the right answers, in all likelihood your methods are indeed working and successful. All right, let's go ahead now and look at example one. Example one, we're given a couple pair or one pair of parallel lines. So the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go highlight those parallel lines, and I might even extend them. In this question two, part of the difficulty lies in the fact that neither the purple transversal that I just highlighted nor the green transversal intersect both pairs of parallel lines. So one option you might have would be to be to, to extend one or both of those transversals. Rather, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw in an auxiliary line that's parallel to both of the given lines. So my auxiliary line is going to be that green dotted line. And I want to go draw that so it goes right through the vertex of angle H. There we go. The bigger your pictures are for these, the more helpful they're going to be. All right, so if I'm looking now at the red transversal, I'm going to look at the purple line on top and the green parallel line. I know that they're same side angles that are interior or inside the parallel lines. They have to be supplementary to each other. So because one of those angles measures 162 degrees, the angle formed by the green parallel line and my red transversal is going to have to be the supplement to that 162 degrees or in other words, 18 degrees. Notice that as I go through these, I'm labeling everything I can in the diagram. 
Now, 18 degrees doesn't represent the angle that I'm looking for. However, it might help me find the angle that I'm looking for, and that's why it's critical that you remember to label everything. Now I'm going to look at the blue transversal. And because the blue transversal only intersects the green parallel line in the purple parallel line, those are going to be the lines that I'm looking for. This angle in here that measures 98 degrees, he's inside the parallel lines. He's going to be supplementary to this fellow up here, making the measure of this guy in here 82 degrees. So now looking at the picture, angle H is the angle in yellow. He's made up of my 18 degree angle and my 82 degree angle. Therefore, the measure of angle H is exactly 100 degrees. All right, moving onwards. In example two, they give us that beautiful diagram. Once again, I'm going to start by taking my highlighter and highlighting pairs of parallel lines. I like to extend my lines because I think it's helpful. That's a strategy that you might find helpful or maybe not. It's going to be dependent upon how your brain processes the information. So those two guys are my yellow, or I'm sorry, my green parallel lines. In this particular diagram, I have a couple different transversals. I have that blue transversal right there, which I'm going to go ahead and start with. And if I look at the blue transversal, this angle here, which measures 92, is alternate interior to angle J, making the measure of angle J also 92 degrees. Remember, anytime you have parallel lines, the alternate interior angles formed on those parallel lines are always going to be congruent. So notice that I was able to determine the measure of angle J without drawing in any auxiliary lines. I'm not going to draw those auxiliary lines unless I absolutely positively need to. At this point, there's no other angle measures really that are fairly obvious by looking at that blue transversal. So I'm going to switch gears here and I'm going to consider my red transversal. On my red transversal, I see that angle M and that 46 degree angle are alternate interior angles. And because they are alternate interior angles on parallel lines, they have to be congruent as well. So now I know the measure of angle M must be equal to 46 degrees. So the last thing I need to do is determine the measure of angle K. And there are a couple different ways that you could do this. If you see a way that involves the parallel lines, you can go ahead and use that way. I'm going to use the yellow triangle. I know that all the angles in my triangle have to total up to 180 degrees. I know two out of the three angles. So I know that if I add the measure of angle K plus the 92 degrees plus the 46 degrees in angle M, I know that those three have to total or sum to 180 degrees. And that, therefore, makes the measure of angle K equal to 42 degrees. And I can and should do a quick check here and just make sure 42 and 92 plus the 46 does indeed total to the 180. And they do, so I'm all good. So notice that in that example, I didn't even need to draw in any auxiliary lines. Which brings us down to the last example, number three down at the bottom of the page. And looking at this one, this one is a little different in that it has two different pairs of parallel lines. I'm going to start by highlighting just one pair. In this particular diagram, there's only one transversal. The transversal is represented by that blue line right there. So I'm going to start by looking to see if there are any measures or any angles that I can determine just by looking at the green parallel lines and the blue transversal. So these guys here, the angle Q and the 94 degrees, are corresponding angles. And any angles or corresponding angles on parallel lines always have to be congruent. So now we know that the measure of angle Q must be equal to 94 degrees. I'm going to go label that in my picture. Since it doesn't appear as though there's a whole lot that we can do with those green parallel lines, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to look at the second pair of parallel lines that they've given to us 
And I'm going to make those fellas purple. And in looking at those purple parallel lines, I'm still considering the blue line to be my transversal. But if I look at this angle in here whose measure is 68 degrees, he's corresponding to this angle up here. And again, anytime you have parallel lines, corresponding angles on those parallel lines have to be congruent. So that makes the measure of that purple angle in there 68 degrees. Unfortunately, though, it still hasn't helped me determine the measure of angle P. However, if I go look at the three angles that together make up that red straight angle, I know that if I add those three angles together, the measure of angle P plus the 94 degrees that we know plus the 68 degrees that we know, I know that those three angles have to total up to 180 degrees. And therefore, I can determine that the measure of angle P is equal to 18 degrees. So this, too, was an example where I didn't have to draw in an auxiliary line. In fact, the diagram was already complicated enough. The moral of the story there is if you can do it without the parallel line or without the auxiliary line, you want to make sure you do it without the auxiliary line. At this time, I'm going to have you go ahead and flip up to the top of page six and, like always, summarize the key ideas and important understanding and see if you can take a look at the questions on page six.